Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Let's talk about different factors that can affect the efficiency of bioremediation. It is a complex process that we want to use life or the processes associated with life, the biological processes, to remediate a certain contaminant from a certain site. So there are lots of factors that can uh, affect the output of this process. So basically, uh, we will try to simplify these factors. So basically, we can divide these factors into two large groups. The first one are those factors which relate directly with the contaminant itself, its characters, its chemical basis, its chemical nature, its physical basis, physical nature, and other such properties of the contaminant itself. These are the primary factors that actually influence the output of any bioremediation process. The second uh, group can be the environmental factors and all other factors which can indirectly affect the uh, output of the bioremediation process. So if you talk about the contaminant itself, obviously whatever properties a contaminant has, uh, those will play their role and those will affect the uh, efficiency level of the bioremediation process. So for example, the chemical nature of the pollutant. The chemical nature kya hai? As we discussed in our last session that uh, the organic compounds, the carbon containing compounds uh, are more efficiently destroyed by microbes as compared to other compounds such as metals. So this is about the chemical nature of that pollutant. Jitni iski chemical nature is zyada toxic ya zyada uh, hard to biodegrade hogi, utni zyada we have to take strong measures. The physical state of the pollutant at the site. Ek pollutant uh, kisi lab mein hai, lab ke andar ek jar mein hai, uski ek physical state aur hai. However, when it is present in the environment, uh, the physical state is going to be different. So that state at the contamination site, at the site where the uh, pollution is, वहाँ पे जो इसकी physical state है that also matters. So depending on the state of the contaminant, uh, our choice of bioremediation may vary. Next is uh, whether the pollutant is susceptible to biodegradation or whether it is recalcitrant. Uh, we have to check that the contaminant uh, can be degraded by the microbes or not because if it cannot be degraded by the microbes, uh, perhaps we are uh, uh, we are at wrong to choose bioremediation or maybe at times hum ye bhi ho sakta hai ke hum uh, usko biodegrade karna chahe but we are using a wrong species of bacteria jo ke uske against bilkul kaam nahi karti so first we have to study uh, the contaminant and the different microbes which can actually degrade and metabolize and the contaminant and this is all done in laboratories so uske baad we will be in better position to decide that which microbe should be utilized at the site. Next is it must also be dissolved or at least in contact with the water at the site. Water is life, universal solvent. So uh, the pollutant, the contaminant should be present dissolved in water or, or at least should be in contact with water so that the microbes can act on it in a much better way. So grasa hai to obviously uski degradation or remediation zyada better hogi or output zyada now, uh, last but not least, about the concentration of the contaminant. Okay, it should be in medium to low concentration, not much high concentration. Why so? Jitna high concentration hogi uski, utna zyada wo toxic hoga, and the microbes there will be unable to survive at all. So, we do not want that to happen. So, depending on the concentration of the contaminant, we will choose the strategy. Agar bohat zyada highly uh, high concentration uski wahan pe aur koi life wahan survive nahi kari we may not be able to apply any kind of bioremediation at all so that's why we have to see ki actual scenario hai kya so basically when now we try to uh, make a plan make a strategy of bioremediation we have to actually study the site first and all the physical and chemical aspects of the site talking about the environmental factors jo ke secondary factor hai yahan pe humne unko group alag kiya hai Obviously, these are the factors uh, which mostly include temperature, pH, and especially the soil type. Temperature, if we talk about the microbes are mostly uh, those can survive anywhere from 0 to 50 and even higher as well. However, uh, the most uh, of the microorganisms, uh, those happen to live happily from 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. And that is the most appropriately uh, suitable uh, used temperature for bioremediation. Why so? Because in this temperature range, mein, Bohat zyada microbes jo hai, wo happily grow kar sakte hai. However, the range can be expanded uh, from to up to 50 and maybe beyond as well. 
and as low as 0 degrees Celsius as well. However, the efficiency will reduce. About the pH range, again, macros can be found to be acidophiles as well, alkalophiles as well. However, the most microbes, those can survive from 5 to 9, especially from 6 to 8 pH. So, this range may jitne bhi bioremediation application is at is pH range ke upar base karti hai because the microbes can survive much happily on uh, in this pH condition. And obviously, the soil type. Soil type bohat zata matter karti hai uh, depending on the type of the soil. We would like to uh, replan our strategy. Why so? Because uh, soil type bohat rang ke ho sakti hai. So, the most appropriate soil types which can be easily employ, uh, used and acrylic bond by bioremediation, those are sands and gravel. Why so? Because uh, uh, they uh, offer proper aeration and uh, uh, water content can be easily present in it as well. Uh, obviously, not completely sand, not completely gravel, but a mixture of sand, uh, gravel and clay as well. On the other hand, completely uh, a soil which contains much high proportion of clay or organic content is not as much suitable uh, for bioremediation as compared to the other soil types. There are so many other factors as well. Obviously, you can name them and they are there. For example, nutrient availability. How much nutrients are available at the site? Are those nutrients good enough for the survival uh, and the life of the microbes and the activity? Because uh, when they are going to, uh, when they want to survive there, they would like to grow and multiply. They need nutrients for that. Moreover, uh, if you want them to metabolize and degrade the contaminant again, it is an energy consuming process. Oxygenation should be there. As we know, most uh, uh, life depends on oxygen. Um, moreover, we have talked about different uh, types of uh, uh, treatments. Mein. Uh, aeration has a very big role. Hai, so, oxygenation should be there. Presence of other inhibitory contaminants and compounds. Obviously, jitne bhi contaminated sites hain, uh, those are not contaminated by just one type of contaminant or toxic molecule. There are so many other contaminants present over there as well. So, if you want to apply any microbe to a certain polluted site, we first have to check whether that microbe will be able to survive over there or not. And how we can do that? Uh, we have to first analyze the site and all the contaminants present over there. And then we have to check whether the microbes that we want to apply over there, whether that microbe can survive all those contaminants present at the site or not. Only then we are going to apply that microbe on that site. Otherwise, kya hoga ke, for example, there are three toxic compounds on a certain site ABC and our microbe that we want to employ over there, uh, that microbe is only resistant to compound A. So, when we employ karenge, wahan pe, jab apply karenge is microbe ko us site, pe, so compound B or C ki wajah se ye microbe destroy ho jayega, survive nahi kar paega, iski death ho jayegi. So output will be zero. So first we have to study the site, physical and chemical parameters and all the different types of toxic compounds that are present over there. And then we have to study our bacteria that we think is good enough uh, for bioremediation. So uske mutabik we pick and choose ke koon sa bacteria zyada suitable hoga, koon sa microbe zyada suitable hoga. Whether the site is contained or if the groundwater runs off, the site contained hai ya uske pa water uh, run off hota rata hai, obviously that will matter a lot uh, because uh, we would like to see whether uh, bio augment karte hai kisi microbe ko to wahan pe uske rehne ke chances kitne zyada hai. But contaminants are present, what are the concentrations and uh, whether they are biodegradable or not, again the same thing. So we have to study the site first completely, almost completely. ये सारी जो पिक्चर है इसको हायरार्की में देखा जा सकता है कि सबसे पहले इंपॉर्टेंट जो है वो कंटेमिनेट इटसेल्फ है कि उसकी क्या फिजिकल केमिकल नेचर है उसको अंडरस्टैंड करना उसके बाद बाकी सारे प्रोसेसेस आते हैं सो ये हायरार्की है इस सारे अमल में एडिफेटिक एडाफिक फैक्टर्स फैक्टर्स एसोसिएटेड विद द सोइल एंड अदर सच थिंग्स दोस प्ले अ वाइटर रोल एज़ वेल इन पिकिंग एंड चूजिंग व्हाट काइंड ऑफ स्ट्रेटजी वी वांट टू अप्लाई फॉर एग्जांपल सोइल टाइप हमने पहले बात की सोइल टाइप की बेस पे भी we can change our decisions. Depth. The contaminant is site pe kitni depth mein hai. Uske mutabik, again, uh, different strategy can be employed. Porosity. Soil mein kitni porosity hai. Jitni zyada hogi, utni zyada usme aeration ke chances hai. Texture kaisa soil ka? Texture se murad ke 
क्या उसमें रेशन हो सकती है क्या उसमें वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी है या नहीं है सारी बातें इसमें आएंगी मोशर कंटेंट कितना है उसका कितना ड्राई है कितना वेट है सॉइल वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी क्या है उसकी ह्यूमस कंटेंट कितना है ऑर्गेनिक कंटेंट कितना है उसमें और रिलेटेड बायोलॉजिकल एक्टिविटी कितनी है वहाँ पे ऑलरेडी जो माइक्रोब्स हैं वो कितने हैं कितनी ज़्यादा वहाँ पे लाइफ की एक्टिविटी है जितनी ज़्यादा होगी इसका मतलब है कि वी हैव सो मैनी वी हैव सो मैनी डिफरेंट स्पीशीज ऑफ माइक्रोब्स टू पिक एंड चूज फ्राम जो कि हम बाद में वहाँ पे अप्लाई कर सकते हैं या हम जो ऑलरेडी वहाँ पे बायोलॉजिकल एक्टिविटी हो रही है उसी को इन्हांस कर सकते हैं ताकि जो वहाँ पे डिग्रेडेशन नेचुरल हो रही है वो ज़्यादा एफिशेंट हो ऑल दिस पैरामीटर्स कैन इन्फ्लुएंस एंड दे इंटरेक्ट विद ईच अदर एज वेल दिस इज अ बेसिक स्केच ऑफ हाउ डिफरेंट फैक्टर्स कैन अफेक्ट द ओवरऑल पिक्चर सो यू कैन सी हेयर द प्राइमरी इज द बेसिकली कंटेमिनेट इट्स द बेसिकली इट्स करेक्टर एंड ओरिजन एंड देन कम्स ऑल द अदर फैक्टर्स सच एस सॉइल टाइप ह्यूमस कंटेंट वाटर होल्डिंग कैपेसिटी एंड ऑल एंड देन कोलेक्टिवली मॉडिफाइड कंटेमिनेट इफेक्ट इज अचीव सो वी हैव टू स्टडी ऑल दीज बिफोर डिसाइडिंग वट काइंड ऑफ अप्रोच शुड बी टेकन अगेन द सेम क्वेश्चन विच टेक्निक इज मोस्ट अप्रोप्रिएट Uh, this is a very uh, vague question actually. Uh, it de- the answer depends on lots of different things. उसमें से बहुत सारी हमने अभी डिस्कस की एंड ओबियसली इट इज अ साइट स्पेसिफिक इशू साइट को देख के कंटेनमेंट को देख के उसके मुताबिक डिसाइड किया जाता है सो डिसीजन इज मेड बेसिस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सो मैनी थिंग्स फॉर एग्जाम्पल ट्रैफिक मैटर्स प्रॉपर रिस्क असेसमेंट शुड बी देयर एज वेल चेकेशन एंड क्वान्टिफिकेशन ऑफ द कंटेमिनेंट सो सारी ये चीज़ें देख के उसके बाद एक प्लान डिजाइन किया जाता है फॉर्मुलेशन ऑफ एक्शन प्लान and once you have planned it uh, you need to get it approved from certain regulatory body so uske baad ye sara hum process kar sakte hain and then is the is the actual implementation of the remediation work itself so that's how the whole process takes place again first is the uh, thing basic thing is that you should know the site as much as possible only then uh, a much efficient bioremediation uh, plan can be achieved i will see you in next lesson